Alrighty, um, so we'll be working on this guy today. Um, this is version 9 of my 3D printed speakers. And I have to say that this one is by far standing out amongst all the other speakers as far as volume goes, bass output goes, and um, just overall performance in a speaker. Um, so we'll get into the build and then we'll come back here and I'll kind of go over the design changes that I made to this because there was quite a few. And then after that we'll go to the play test and closing statements. So yeah.
so now that you've seen this actually built, um, we'll jump right into talking about some of the major design changes that happened. Um, starting at the front here, uh, the surround has went from a half round to what I'm going to call a ripple design. I don't know if there's a technical term for that or not, but um, I'm calling it a ripple uh, surround. And then the cone. Um, I did a significant change on the cone. So the cone now is going to be printed on resin printers. Um, I went from having one millimeter to two millimeter thick cones that were weighing well over 20, 30 grams down to a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeter thick wall cone on this guy. So a lot of reduced mass in the moving pieces of this speaker which I believe helps drive efficiency up. Um, moving to the back of the speaker, you can see that I used square magnets instead of round magnets this time. Um, I don't know if there's a benefit to square magnets or a benefit to round magnets. I just know that I was able to squeeze more magnets per square inch into this design than I am on like my round magnet designs. Um, Secondly, the magnet holder is printed out of protopasta PLA iron fill. So it actually allows the magnetic field to travel along the whole piece instead of just the magnets carrying the magnetic field. Um, lastly, the as you've seen in the coil winding video, if you've watched it, if not, um, I would suggest maybe looking at that. But that's where I got the coil made, was on my coil winding machine that I made. And that just allowed me to kind of close up the tolerances around the coil. And um, it gave it a more uniform design, and it's not rubbing at all. Because before I would have to, like, finesse and kind of remove material from places to get the, the piston action to actually go without friction and this time it just kind of went together. So, yeah. Um, so moving forward, we're gonna go into the testing. Um, I have another way to test speakers now. It's the, the DATS V3, which I'm assuming is a Dayton Audio Testing System version three. Um, that's gonna allow me to pull TS parameters from my speakers moving forward from now on. Um, and that should give me the ability to start designing enclosures for the speakers. So I want to maybe do that in like a mini video here in the future for this guy. Um, build an enclosure based off those TS parameters and see what kind of performance I can actually pull out of this generation before I move on to the 10th generation. Um, beyond that though, I think we'll jump into the testing and then we'll meet back here for kind of some closing statements. So yeah. Okay, um, so you guys have seen the graphs now, um, you've seen the DATS screenshots that I have. 
Um, now that I have that DAT system and I can start looking at the TS parameters on these, it allows me to actually start changing things and tying my changes to what parameters it change and then the ways that it moves those numbers. And then I can now start to fine tune and change things to move all of these TS parameter numbers the way that I need them to move. So that will be kind of what I do going forward is changing one or two things probably one thing and seeing what happens to those numbers and then using that information I'm going to slowly start to build a kind of a knowledge base of what certain changes to a speaker make to the TS parameters and that should allow me to start to develop a much better speaker so that'll be kind of the plan moving forward also, like I said, I do want to start building enclosures for a select few of these speakers, so that's probably going to be one of the next videos. So, um, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, like, subscribe, it just lets me know that you're enjoying the content. Um, so yeah, um, until next time guys.